The Bellman Ford algorithm finds the shortest path from a single source vertex to all other vertices in a graph. Now, when we use this algorithm, negative edge weights are allowed in the graph, unlike Dijkstra's algorithm, which I've also made another video on. Now, when we use the Bellman Ford algorithm, we perform a total of V minus one iterations, where V is the number of nodes in the graph. If no updates occur on a given iteration, then the algorithm is complete. So let's jump right into an example. Let's say we have this graph down here, and we can see that there are a total of six nodes. In other words, V is equal to six. So the most number of iterations that we would have to do to complete the Bellman Ford algorithm would be six minus one, which is five. Now for this particular graph, we're going to assume that node A right here is our source node. And what we want to do is we want to find the shortest path from node A to every other node in the graph. So when we use this algorithm, we're first going to create this table over here where the first column in the table simply shows all the node names, so A through F in this case. The second column shows the distance, so the shortest distance from node A to every other node. And the last column shows the previous node. So that's the node that led us to the shortest distance from A to every other node. So let's go ahead and jump into our first iteration of the Bellman Ford algorithm. So for our starting distance values, from node A to itself, we're going to say that's a distance of zero because you don't have to travel any distance to get to A. So that's just a distance of zero. Now for every other distance, so from node A to every other node in the graph, we're going to initialize a starting distance of infinity. Now what we're going to do is just loop through each node and travel to every other node that it's connected to. All right, so let's start with node A and let's travel to every other node that node A is connected to. So we can see we can travel from A to node B right here, and that's a distance of four. So we just have to ask ourselves, is this distance of four shorter than the current distance shown for node B in the graph? Yes, four is shorter or smaller than infinity. So we're going to update this distance to be four. And for the previous node, we'll say that node A led us to this shortest distance. Okay, next we can travel from A to node C, and we can see that's a distance of six. So we ask ourselves, is six shorter than the current distance shown in the table for node C? Yes, six is shorter than or smaller than infinity. So we'll update this infinity to be six. And the previous node that led us to node C was node A. So now we're done with node A because we traveled to every other node that we could that was leading from node A. So now we'll move on to node B. We can see there's only one edge that's leading from node B. So if we go from node B to node D, that's a distance of three. Now, currently B has a distance of four. So to get to node D, we have to add three to that. So four plus three is seven. So is seven smaller than the current distance shown for node D in the table? Yes, seven is smaller than infinity. So we'll update this infinity to be seven. And the previous node that led us to node D was B. So we'll put a B right here. Okay, so we're all done with node B. So just moving alphabetically through the nodes, we'll now move on to node C. So if we go from C to node E, we can see that's a distance of negative one. So C currently has a distance of six. So six minus one is five. So is five smaller than the current distance shown for node E? Yes, so we'll update that value. Okay, now if we travel from node C to node F, that's a distance of five. So currently C has a distance of six, if we add five to that, that's a total distance of 11. So is 11 smaller than the current distance shown for node F in the table? Yes, so we'll update this infinity value to be 11. Okay, so we're all done with node C now. We traveled from every edge that we could from node C. So let's move on to node D. If we go from node D to node F, that's a distance of negative two. So currently D has a distance of seven, which we can see in the table. If we do seven minus two, that's five. So is five smaller than the current distance shown to get to node F? Yes, five is shorter than 11. So we'll update this 11 to be a five. And the previous node that led us to the shortest distance for F was node D. And we actually forgot to fill in this previous node for node E. So the shortest distance that led us to E was node C. So we'll put a C right here. Okay, so now we're done with D. Now moving on to node E, we see that we can go from node E to node B, which is a distance of negative two. So currently node E has a distance of five. If we do five minus two, that's three. So is three smaller than the current value to get to node B? Yes, three is smaller than the current distance of four. So we'll update this four to be a three. And now the previous node that led us to the shortest distance to B is node E. So we'll update this A to be an E. 
Okay, and then if we go from node E to node D, that's a distance of 2. So currently node E has a distance of 5. If we add 2 to that, that's a distance of 7. So is 7 smaller than the current distance shown to get to D? Well, D is already at a distance of 7, so we don't need to update that value. And then lastly, we can move on to node F. So node F only has one edge that's going away from it. So if we take node F to node E, that's a distance of 3. So currently, node F has a distance of 5. So if we add 3 to that, that's a total of 8. So is 8 shorter than the distance currently shown for node E? No, it's not. So we don't need to update that value. So that completes our first iteration of the Bellman-Ford algorithm. Now we can move on to the second iteration, where we just repeat the whole process all over again. Okay, so on iteration number two, we just do the exact same thing. So start at node A, and we'll travel to B. That's a distance of four. Is that shorter than the distance shown for B in the table? No, it's not. So don't update that value. Now to go from A to C, that's a distance of six. Is six shorter than the distance shown in the table for C? No, so don't update. Now moving on to B. B currently has a distance of 3. To go from B to D, it's a distance of 3. So 3 plus 3, that's 6. Is 6 shorter than the distance shown for D? Yes, it is. So we're going to update this 7 to be a 6. And the previous node that led us to D was B, so this doesn't have to change at all. We can keep this as a B. Okay, now moving on to node C. If we travel from node C to node E, that's a distance of negative 1. So C currently has a cost of 6. If we do 6 minus 1, that's 5. Is 5 smaller than the current value shown to get to node E? No, it's not. So we don't update that value. Then we can go from node C to node F. So C, again, has a current distance of 6. If we add 5 to that, that's a distance of 11. Is 11 shorter than the current distance shown for node F? No, it's not. So we won't update this value. Okay, so we're done with C. Moving on to node D. To go from D to F, that's a distance of negative 2. So D currently has a distance of 6. So if we do 6 minus 2, that's 4. So is 4 smaller than the current distance shown to get to node F? Yes, 4 is smaller than this 5. So we'll update this 5 to be a 4. And the previous node that led us to the shortest distance was D, so we don't need to change that. Okay, so we're done with node D. Moving on to node E. If we travel from E to B, that's a distance of negative 2. So E currently has a distance of 5. So if we do 5 minus 2, that's 3. So is 3 smaller than the current distance to get to node B? No, it's already equal to 3, so we don't update that value. And then we can go from E to node D, so that's a distance of 2. So again, E currently has a distance of 5. So if we do 5 plus 2, that's a distance of 7. So is 7 smaller than the current distance shown to get to node D? No, it's not, so we won't update that value. And then lastly, moving on to node F, if we go from F to node E, that's a distance of 3. So F currently has a distance of 4, so 4 plus 3 is 7. Is 7 smaller than the distance shown to get to node E in the table? No, it's not smaller than 5, so we won't update that value. And that completes our second iteration of the Bellman-Ford algorithm. So because we made a couple updates to the distances in the table during that iteration, that means we have to go on to the next iteration. Okay, so moving on to iteration number 3, just to save a little bit of time, I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. During this iteration, we do not make any updates to the distances in the distance column. So what that means is that we're done with the algorithm, so we don't have to run another iteration. And what it means is that this table now shows the shortest distance from node A to every other node in the table. So for example, the shortest distance from node A to node F has a distance of 4. Now to actually find that path from A to F, all we have to do is follow the previous node list. So this says, to get to node F, the previous node was node D. So if we look at our graph, we can draw a line from D to F. Now if we jump to node D, we can see that the shortest path to that was through node B. So if we want, we can draw a line from B to D. Now if we jump up to node B right here, the shortest path to get there was through node E. So if we draw a line from E to B, and then if we jump to node E, we can see the shortest path to get to E was through C. So we'll draw a line from C to E. And then if we jump up to node C, we'll see that the shortest path to get there was from node A. So we can draw a line from A to C. Now what we've done in the graph is we've drawn the actual path, the shortest path that took us from node A to node F. And if we add the values, we'll see that's 6 minus 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 2. And that comes out to a distance of 4. 
just as our distance value shows in our table. So you can use that exact same process to find the shortest distance from node A to any of the other nodes in the table. And by using this previous node column, you can find the actual path that you can take from node A to each of the other nodes. So that is how you can use the Bellman-Ford algorithm to find the shortest distance from a single source vertex to all other vertices in a graph.